Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here today. Thank you very much for coming to my talk. Uh, this is an amazing conference, and the team are doing a great job. I want to talk to you today about RxJS. And one thing you should know about me before that is that I'm coming from Colombia, as Martina said. Colombia is a country that gave birth to some celebrities, such as Cuadrado, Shakira, Juanes, and some others not so important. Um, <laughs> what's important, though, is that uh, four months ago, as Martina said, they moved to Austria to now live in Graz to work for a company called Parkside. But when it comes to communities, I always like to contribute a lot. And that's what I organized Angular Medellin in Colombia and also NG Colombia, a conference for Latin America, for Angular developers in Latin America. But other than that, you should know that I'm a Google developer expert. If you cannot see my face, it's right there, uh, next to Mike Ryan. So, and if you don't know what this is, it's just people that are really passionate about community efforts. And if you ever want to become one because you think you're doing a lot of community efforts, just reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to nominate you to be the next Google Developer Expert. Um, other than that, you can follow me on Twitter with JD Juan. And at this precise moment, I would like to make a parenthesis. I would like to tell you something you don't know about me. And that is that my grandfather is actually Italian. His name is Pietro Ferrari. And Although my grandfather was born in Colombia, he was influenced by my grandfather's roots, Italian roots. He loved the pasta, the pizza, the music. He wanted so bad to come to Italy one day. He even played Renato Carosone very often. He will play Piccolissima Serenata all the time, all the time. He just craved to be in this country. But he ran out of time. My father passed away five years ago. And although he didn't manage to accomplish that, I am here representing him. So this talk is for you, Dad. Te quiero. The most important part of a talk is understanding the problem, knowing what is this going to solve you, what problem is going to solve for you. And writing a synchronous code is usually complicated. This is what it feels like when you're writing asynchronous code. You just don't get it, right? It's, it's so complicated. It's, it's already there, and you, it's complicated. And some of you might be laughing. Yes, I get it. But some of you might be wondering, yes, but what is asynchronous code? I never heard about this. Well, it's much more simpler than you think. It's actually when you're talking about events, events, something that happens over time. When you're talking about these kind of things that happens over time, you're talking about asynchronous code. And one famous example is just an HTTP request, which you might find very often in modern websites. You just load a website, it makes an HTTP request, and you get an HTTP response. But the HTTP response is not immediate. It's actually, it takes a few milliseconds. And that's the reason it is asynchronous, because it doesn't happen right away. Now, sometimes the response takes a few milliseconds, sometimes it takes a few seconds or sometimes you don't get what you're expecting, or you get an error 500, but that's, those are just edge cases, so you don't have to worry about those. Um, the truth is that um, when it comes to JavaScript, you might, be work, you might heard this word before, callbacks, promises, and RxJR observables. I wanted to make an analogy that you will be able to understand, like the history, where is this coming from? But. When I was searching on the internet, I found a GIF, a 15-second GIF that explained it in the most professional way. And I, th I thought, well, this has got to explain the whole situation to the audience. So here it goes. The first step is a HTTP request. When you try to do it, oh, sorry. When you try to do it, it goes like this. And so the first thing you try is callbacks. But it doesn't work either. So then you go to promises. And it doesn't work either. So finally, you end up trying RxJS. So you might be wondering, um, uh, what is RxJS in indeed? So I found the definition right here, and I want to put it for you. 
When I read this definition for the first time two or three years ago when I was learning this technology, my friends uh, back in Colombia recorded me and this was my reaction. I couldn't understand what it meant. It's like, oh, what is this? Probably for some of you it's the same. But I managed to take this definition and then block the parts that are not so relevant. So I put some black squares here and there and there you are. It's a library for asynchronous code in JavaScript. That's all you need to remember. And RxJS is composed of observables and operators. That's an oversimplification of what RxJS actually is. But this is a good starting point. Now, if you ever heard about RxJS or observables, you might have found these on the internet. Uh, if you take a look at this graph for the first time, you might think like, oh, that's, those are really nice shapes and colors. It kind of looks like uh, cr Candy Crush, right? <laughs> like, clearly you have four streams and a merge map at the end, right? Like, oh, yeah, for sure. Um, it seems like they were inspired by, by Candy Crush in a way, or all the way around. I found this in a net magazine the other day. Um, but in any case, uh, what... what <laughs> um, but the truth is that I wanted to come to you with something you were able to grasp right away because RxJS is not always easy to understand. Observables, the observable pattern might be complicated. So I brought to you an analogy, an analogy that starts with a website, a website some of you love because of the advertisement it enforces you to watch. It's called YouTube. And it, YouTube is really uh, a great platform uh, in which you can find some interesting um, analogies for observables. It turns out that there are four key concepts you need to remember. So I need you to pay close attention to this. So close attention to this. Yeah, so the first concept is channel. What you're seeing right now is a screenshot of my favorite band all over the world. It's called Radiohead. How many people like Radiohead? Raise up your hands. Nice. Nice. It's really good. It's a really good band. In any case, channel is the first concept you need to remember, so don't forget channel. The number two concept is the people that is consuming the content, that is the observer, aka the person watching the videos of YouTube. So the observer is the number two key word. And after that, you have number three, and most important, the subscription. Without the subscription, nothing's ever going to happen. If you're watching um, Rated Hub's channel and they release a new video, unless you subscribed, nothing's going to happen. So you need to make sure you subscribed. And last but not least, the content. This is Paranoid Android. It's a masterpiece. This is my favorite song of Radiohead. If you never heard this song, I really recommend you to check it out. In any case, to summarize it, we have channel, observer, subscription, and content. Now, for the sake of RxJS, what we're going to do now is that we're going to replace channel with observable. And there you have it. But you're people of code, and you would likely see it reflected in code, in JavaScript. So I have a two lines that reflect these four key concepts right away. Here it comes. What you see up there in the first line is that we're making a HTTP request, a GET request. We're storing it in a variable called observable. And then later on, we subscribed. What we do, what we put inside the parentheses, it's the observer is the one that knows what to do with the content, which in this case is printing it, is logging it, is the function console log. Nevertheless, if you have tried to do RxJS, you might have seen something like this. Some people prefer to put a callback so it's more clear what's going on there, just like that. So you put a callback and you try to do whatever you want inside. But even there, um, you might find that some people uh, would rather use a more expressive word. So instead of using the word observable, they would give it a proper name, such as user, and instead add a suffix at the end, which is a dollar sign, which is a sign that tells people, hey, this is an observable, a synchronous value, not a synchronous value, like you would think. So you get something like this. But even more than that, you might as well get, you might as well get this. Sometimes people would rather strip away all the logic that's happening in the subscription through something called RxJS operators, which are like a lot of pipelines that are in the middle transforming and 
working with the information that you're getting. So at the end, an observable is just making a request and then subscribing. And all the logic or tra transformation or everything is happening in the middle. And when it comes to Angular, it's actually pretty evident because when you work with the async pipe, it becomes even much easier because you no longer have to subscribe. So what happens is that the async pipe manages the subscription itself. Um, so this is, this is a, a simplistic approach to RxJS and how you would see it in code. But I have decided to take a challenge today and do some live coding for you. So let's take a look. I have prepared a website. Uh, this is a, just a random website with HTML and JavaScript in which I have imported already RxJS. Um, but we're going to start with something simple. What I'm going to do is then I'm going to go to the script right now, and I'm going to write some code here. For example, console.log, and I'm going to say one. Um, and if I reload the website, there it is. There you have one. So we're going to try something more wild. We're going to come here and do something like this. Document.addAvenListener. We're going to say, hey, I want you to read the mouse move event from the UI. And I want you to console.log it, just like that. So if I save that, what's going to happen is that technically, every time I move my mouse, it's going to console lock the event. Let's take a look. Reload, and here you have it. It's working. So this is the uh, DOM API that you can use anytime, and this is how you add events to your code in, in the HTML. And this works, works pretty well. And at this point, you probably don't need any other fancy stuff. But the reality is that most JavaScript applications actually have a lot of things going on. And you will probably will need to map this information, transform it, and do some other things. So we're going to switch from this approach to RxJS. What we're going to do first is that we're going to import RxJS from event. It is a function that allows you to get events from the DOM. So this is how we do it. Const from event, and then we say RxJS. So this should have the, what I'm looking for. And later on, I'm going to do from event, and I'm going to say, hey, I want you to read the, the events from the document. And what I want you to read is the event called mouse move. Um, guess what? This, this one right here is our observable. Uh, so we're going to store it here. Like, hey, this is my mouse move. Let's call it mouse for now, mouse observable. Now, does it work already? If I save and go back, will it work? Certainly not, because I haven't subscribed. So I will go back and come over here, come over here and subscribe. I'm going to say mouse move, mouse dot subscribed, subscribed. And what I'm going to do is that I want you to console log whatever happens. So I'm going to save this now, come back here, and technically it should do the same. There you are. So it's working. And up to this point, there's no difference. It's still the same thing. But we're going to add some operators to it, which is going to make it more interesting. Although, I have prepared something for you. I have created a function that's called paint. It's going to come here, it's paint. It's coming from a file called canvas.js, because I have a canvas there, canvas.js. Um, there is, oh, it looks interesting, paint from. Yeah, looks good. And instead of console login, I'm going to do paint. And if I save this, something interesting is going to happen when I reload. It's this. It just paints in the canvas. So it's taking the events and it's just drawing something in the canvas. That's not RxJS code. It's just JavaScript code, but it looks really nice. Um, so what we're going to do is that we're going to start using our operators to transform this information into something more meaningful to us. So the first thing I would like to do is to come here and use the pike function. The pike function is the one that allows you to um, use operators. So what we do is that we kind of set them or, or add them in there, and they just get fired one after the other. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to say, hey, I would like to use an operator called delay. Delay is an operator that it's stored in rxx.operators. And I'm going to put it here, delay. And I want a delay of two seconds. So what's going to happen is that the observable that fires events constantly 
it's only only going to fire after two seconds. So if I move my mouse, I will only see that after two seconds. Let's take a look. So if I reload and I move my mouse, there you are. So it's, it, it's the operator making the effect over your events. You might not need delay very often in your front-end applications, but there are other operators that are actually really convenient. For example, uh, we can use an operator called debounce time. Uh, is it bounce time? Yes, I guess. Debounce, debounce time. And I'm going to say import it here. Debounce time. Yes. So what's going to happen is that the bounce time of one second is going to help me when, I'm, when it comes to improving the performance of my application. For example, if you have a text uh, search like in Amazon or eBay and you're searching for something, it might not fire every HTTP request for every letter you type in the keyboard. It, it will wait a little bit until it shows you the result. If you type something really fast, you won't see results right away because you don't want to make an HTTP request every time. It will consume a lot of uh, energy or bandwidth or whatever. So what we're going to do instead is that we're going to wait for the user to stop typing for one second, and then we're going to fetch the HTTP request. So this is not an HTTP request, but it's a similar example. Let's take a look. So if I reload and I've moved my mouse, nothing's going to happen unless I stop for one second. There you are. So operators like this makes our life easier for us front-end developers all the time. When it comes to fintech applications that require a lot of complex scenarios, this is certainly really, really, really beneficial. Um, one last thing. Uh, one, I, I was reading a tweet, I think, two days ago, quite interesting. Somebody said, the subscription should be the end of your RxJX observable. And I think I kind of agree. So for example, one of the things we can do is that we can instead use an operator called tab that will allow me to do certain things, but one of the common things you do with tab is secondary effects, doing something outside of the scope of your observable. So what I'm going to do now is that uh, I'm going to import tab here. And instead of using this thing here, I'm going to put paint here. So look at subscribe is already much more clean. And therefore, all, all that it's above the observable will can be moved to other files. And then subscribe becomes much easier. And when you're using the async pipe, then it's even easier and better. So this is probably an approach that I would suggest you to give it a try. I'm going to save this, come back here, and this should remain working. I'm going to comment this one for a second. And if I reload, it's still working. And OK, that was a demonstration to it. So let's go back to the slides, which are right here. In any case, um, oh, I was supposed to ask you something. Did you like the talk so far? <laughs> OK, that was a little bit late. But this is just an introduction to what observables might look like to you. There are certain differences when it comes to promises that you might need to be aware. Um, but I'd rather uh, stick this to another talk. For now, I want to um, tell you thank you very much for your time and for paying attention. I'm looking forward to the next time. Thank you. <laughs>